Hello guys, welcome to lecture 7. Today we're going to be talking about a very, very interesting subject, uh, a topic of the whole module actually, uh, referring to Eurozone debt crisis, causes, cures and consequences, uh, a topic that one way or another, we all got influenced by that. Um, to begin with, according to the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, the Eurozone debt crisis was the world's largest in 2011 and 2012. Um, things only got worse uh, that uh, after the crisis started in 2009, when the world first realized that Greece especially could default on its debt, in three years, it escalated into the potential for sovereign debt defaults from Portugal, uh, Italy, Ireland, and Spain. The, the European Union, led by Germany and France, struggled to support these members. Uh, they initiated bailouts from the European Central Bank and the International Monetary Fund, but these measures didn't keep many from questioning the viability of the euro itself. Okay. Uh, <coughs> I'm sorry. <coughs> now, causes in general. First, there were no penalties for countries that violated the debt to GDP ratios set by EU's funding master criteria. Okay, this is because actually France and Germany also are spending above the limit and it would be hypocritical to sanction others there until they got their own houses in order. Okay, there were no teeth in any sanctions except exclusions from the Eurozone and this was a harsh penalty actually which would weaken the power of the Euro itself. Um, the EU wanted to strengthen the Euro's power. Okay. Second, the, the Eurozone countries uh, benefited from the Euro's power, the, the Europe countries. They, they enjoyed the low interest rates and increased investment capital. Most of this flow of capital was from Germany and France to the southern nations, and this increased liquidity, raised wages and prices, okay, making their exports less competitive. Um, countries using the Euro couldn't do what most countries do to cool inflation, uh, raise interest rates or print less currency. Um, during the recession, tax, re tax revenues fell, but public spending rose to pay for unemployment and other benefits. Okay? Um, third measures okay, slowed the economic growth by being too restrictive. Um, they increased unemployment, cut back consumer spending and reduce the capital needed for lending. So Greek voters were fed up with the recession and shut down the Greek government by giving an equal number of votes to the no austerity Syriza party. Rather than leave the Eurozone, though the new government worked to continue with austerity. Um, in the long term, austerity measures will alleviate the, the Greek debt crisis. In, May, in, 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 in 2012, May, German Chancellor Angela Merkel developed a seven-point plan which went against newly elected French President François Hollande's proposal to create euro bonds. He also wanted to cut back on austerity measures and create more economic stimulus. <clears throat> uh, Merkel actually planned would, first of all, Launch quick start programs to help business startups. Um, relax protections against wrongful dismissal. Um, introduce meaning jobs with lower taxes. Combine apprenticeships with vocational education targeted toward youth unemployment. Um, fifth, create special funds and tax benefits to privatize state owned businesses. Um, establish special economic zones like those in China and invest in renewable energy. Merkel found the, this work to, to integrate East Germany 
and so how austerity measures could boost the competitiveness of the entire eurozone. So the, this seven-point plan followed on an intergovernmental treaty approved on December the 8th in 2011, um, where EU leaders agreed to create a fiscal utility parallel to the monetary union that already existed. Okay, I hope this is clear enough. Uh, I personally agree with this seven point that Merkel was found that worked. It would have been worth to integrate East Germany. And, and actually she saw how austerity measures could boost the competitiveness of the, of the entire Eurozone at the end of the day. Okay, this is straightforward. Now, talking about um, effects of the treaty, okay, uh, the treaty did three things. First, it enforced the budget restrictions of the Maastricht Treaty, okay. Second, it reassured lenders that EU will stand behind its members, sovereign debt, okay. And uh, third, it allowed, okay, the EU to act as a more integrated unit. Specifically, the treaty will create five changes. And I'm going to analyze these changes um, so you understand deeply what do we mean about uh, integrated unit and, and the treaties will have, given those, will have given those changes. To begin with, Eurozone member countries okay, would legally give some budgetary power to centralize EU control. Okay, I think this is very straightforward and very clear. Members that exceeded the 3% deficit to GDP ratio, okay, would face financial sanctions and any plans to issue sovereign debt must be reported in advance as a second measure. Okay, third one, um, Listen, guys, to, just to, to, to pause it here, I understand that, you know, giving a lecture through a video, uh, you might have some questions as I'm running down the, the slides and what I have to tell you. But uh, unfortunately, this is the situation and we we'll have to deal with it. So please, while you're seeing my video, pause it, okay, make some notes, write some questions yourself, okay, and uh, please... Send me an email with any question you might have, okay, uh, regarding anything what I'm telling to you, uh, and I will come back to you within 24 hours. Uh, on the top of that, okay, please read this, the, the PowerPoint slides, and uh, I will be posting some other links and some other YouTube videos to understand generally about the, the Europe crisis, and the causes and the measures taken. Uh, and I hope you will be you will be okay. I believe that you will be okay because it's a spherical materials uploaded to the to the model that will uh, lead you to a better knowledge regarding this topic. So this was just in bracket. So uh, to continue with the European financial stability facility actually was replaced by a permanent bailout fund. So the European stability mechanism became effective in July twelfth. And the, the permanent fund assured lenders that the EU will stand behind its members, lowering the risk of default. Okay. Fourth one was that voting rules in the ESM would allow the emergency decisions to be passed with an 85 quali qualified majority, allowing actually the EU to act, to act faster. Okay. I hope this is clear enough. Um, Eurozone countries would lend another 200 billion euros, okay, to the IMF from their central bank. Okay, a, a huge measure. Okay, this followed, actually, a bailout in May 2010, after 
the situation become to be to remain as a, as a reality where eu leaders pledged 720 billion euros now in in dollars it was like 928 billion dollars according to the exchange rates of them of 2010 uh, to prevent the debt crisis from from triggering another wall street flash crash so the bailout restored faith in the euro which slid to a 14 month low against uh, the dollar uh, and on the meantime the U.S. and China intervened after the ECB said it would not secure rescue Greece and the Lipos rose as, as banks started to panic like in 2008. Only this time, okay, banks were avoiding each other's toxic Greek debt instead of mortgaged bank securities. So actually Greece uh, in a way, was uh, the black uh, sheep of, uh, of the whole situation, uh, according to its to its uh, huge debt. Um, okay, what were you might ask me, and you'll be right. The consequences, okay, of this uh, situation. First of all, consequences was that. The United Kingdom, okay, and several other EU countries that aren't part of the Eurozone, but at Merkel's treaty, okay, uh, they worried the treaty would lead to a two-tier EU. Eurozone countries could create preferential treaties for their members only and exclude EU countries that, that don't have the Euro, okay. Uh, second one, Eurozone countries must agree to cut back in spending which could slow their economic growth as it has in, in, in Greece, as, as I was saying before. So these austerity measures have been politically unpopular. Uh, voters could bring in, in new leaders who might leave the Eurozone of the EU itself. Uh, third, a new form of financing, okay, the Euro bond, all right has become available. So the ESM is funded by 700 billion euros in euro bonds and these are fully guaranteed by the eurozone countries like US treasuries. These bonds could be bought and sold on a secondary market. Okay, by completing with treasuries, the euro bonds could lead to a higher interest rate in the, in the US. A very important question you might ask me, how the crisis could have turned out, okay, and I'm happy to discuss and analyze this. If those countries, okay, have defaulted, it would have been worse than the 2008 financial crisis. Banks, the primary holders of sovereign debt, would face huge losses and smaller ones will have collapsed. In a panic, they cut back on lending to each other, and the LIBOR rate will skyrocket like it did in, in, 2000, uh, in 2008. The ECB held a lot of sovereign debt, okay? Uh, default will have jeopardized in future, okay? In the, a threatened the survival of the EU itself as uncontrolled sovereign debt could result in a recession of global, de de global depression. It could have been worse than the 1998 sovereign debt crisis. When Russia, okay, remember that, defaulted, other emerging market countries did too, but not developed markets. Um, this time it wasn't the emerging markets but uh, the developed markets that were in danger of default, okay, the developed, Germany, France, and the US, the major backers of the IMF, are themselves highly, highly intimidated. This would be little political appetite to add to that debt, to fund the massive bailout needs, okay. And very straightforward and, and very, very clear. Um, very important question again to, to describe and answer is that, okay, 
what was at stake okay listen um debt rating agencies uh, obviously and i hope that everybody heard about them like standard and poor's and the moody's wanted the ecb to step up step, step up okay and guarantee all eurozone member debts but actually germany okay which was the eu leader okay opposed that such a move without assurances uh, it required debtor countries debtor to install the austerity measures needed to put their fiscal houses in order uh, investors okay <coughs> i'm sorry worried that austerity measures would only slow any economic rebound and that two countries need that growth to repay their debts okay um, the austerity measures are needed in the long run but are harmful in the short term um, i understand that this might confuse you but this is the the, the reality okay uh, this is something that uh, it couldn't have been uh, made differently in a way okay uh, this, this was the statement of the standard and poor's and history is there to define whether this was right or wrong so uh, to summarize in general as i've said according to the organization for economic cooperation and development the eurozone debt crisis was the greatest in the greatest threat okay in 2011 and 2012 um crisis started in 2009 just to remember some bullet point dates and some very important uh points into the into the lecture um causes was that there were no penalties for countries that violated this debt to gdp ratios that that, that, was, that it was set by e eu's founding uh maastricht criteria okay to remember that um second eurozone countries benefited from the euro's power as well important to remember okay uh, as angela merkel in, in may 2012 stated and developed a seven point plan which when against newly elected french president francois Hollande proposal to create euro bonds we analyzed these seven uh, seven point plans uh, and it's very important to take it into serious consideration okay one by one uh, the effects of the treaty in three things okay the, what what the treaty affect actually and uh, the bailout uh, in 2010 where the eu leaders pledged 720 billion euros okay please as i said make some notes about uh, my lecture okay uh, Please tell me your opinion, whether you agree or not with the consequences uh, and what would have been uh, planned better to avoid these consequences in any case, okay? Uh, and please uh, send me an email. I will not be uh, tired to repeat myself. To send me an email, I'm here for you. I will ask every single question. Please allow me only 24 hours to come back to you. And... Stay safe. Thank you so much for uh, watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it.